monster man. Made you nervous, didn't I? I thought that was gonna lose me eye. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a good skull on top of my head. What's who? Who has sponsored this particular episode, there, Jack? Like this shirt? Yes. See the zombie rising from the grave? As we all knew, Darwin proposed this yes. a long time ago. So the shirt was made by our friends at Robber Barons, which is a t-shirt site that you should check out, Robert Barons, Inc., I-N-K, dot com. I'll put the info down. Not I-N-C. Our friend Tim uh, turned me on to these guys. I have this shirt. I got another one with Admiral Akbar, Akbar <laughs> on it. It's um, crap. But I love this zombie shirt. It's very cool. Yeah, that's cool. And the brightest shirt ever worn on the show. The only other bright shirt I've worn like this would be my uh, Ron Swanson bacon and egg shirt. <laughs> but it makes shirt. my eyes pop. <laughs> so yeah, I love that shirt. Robert Barron, I'm gonna get some stuff. I need I need new shirts, so they have cool like um, handkerchief kind of um bandanas. Like it looks like um Lando Calrissian's mask from Return of the Jedi. Oh, really? And things like that, or like a Hannibal Lecter. Do they have Dickies? Do they make Dickies? <laughs> no? But I do need something else. This, this shirt glows in the dark, so if they have glow in the dark shirts, I'm big on that. They probably do. They got all kinds of stuff, though. There's a little something sitting here that I covet greatly. It's Jack's. And we're going to open it for the first time. Ever. Well, it's on one of our Skype episodes, I showed this to you, and I promised you that I would unbox it here. I got a Bigfoot bobblehead doll. It's big. It's it's huge. On the side, it says Orang Pendek, Wendigo, the Yeren, the Yowie, Sasquatch, Skunk Ape, Yeti. I mean, they've, they've got them all. They don't make bobbleheads as much as they used to. Now they're making these. Um, Look at the size of this. A lot of packaging. That's what she said. By the way, they put a rank pen deck. A rank pen deck is actually has a small foot in there. Small. I only know because I just finished a book called Savage Jungle. You Rise only know of the because pen deck. you're an expert on this. <laughs> Those damn Sumatran Bigfoots. Oh. Oh. Face down. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah. Oh, that is. That's a. He's got. A, it's like he was in a car accident. <laughs> he's got a neck brace on. <laughs> Some of these I only bring over here like once because they're too delicate. Like my my Hellraiser one. Yeah. It's too delicate to yeah, travel. Pins. I lose. I lost the pin. Oh. Oh, he's got a neck brace. <laughs> it's like Uncle Fester on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> I was just hit by a car. I might leave the neck brace on because uh, watch we're where you drive. He's awesome. You know what? He's got the pose of the uh, Patterson Gimlin film, but he doesn't have the boobs. So this is a male Bigfoot. He doesn't have the Pishkatil that we can see. He's got kind of the Jack Link's messing with Sasquatch body. Or Harry and the Hendersons. A little bit. A little bit of a Chewbacca face. <laughs> so he can hang out with this guy. Ooh. They're buddies. Aww. You know what they say, Bigfoot. Let's check. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that looks, that's really cool, man. Is that an alligator? No, no, it's a, it's a log. I thought there was an alligator. <laughs> that would have been cool. That is awesome. It's really uh, the missing link of our show. He, hey! he is crossing Willow Creek. <laughs> He's going to hang out with him. Oh, Jesus. If he can stand. <laughs> it's a He's big like conga line. <laughs> Feeling hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. We gotta give away uh, something also. Yes. For October, Horrortober as we call it here. Another one of these. Dark Dossier Magazine, the latest ish that we it's shall- It's the Halloween issue. We shall sign and destroy for you and mail it out. We're gonna sign the back because there's a big Monsterman. We on the back. Monsterman. So, <laughs> Monsterman. <laughs> the Yiddish Monster Hunters. Monsterman. So we have picked a winner for this particular issue, and this issue is going out to Rich Duncan. Rich Duncan! Thank you very much, Rich, for always liking and sharing and taking part in our insanity on Facebook. So to thank you properly, we give you an issue of Dark Dossier Magazine with our ugly mugs somewhere in the middle. Tell a friend. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. <laughs>
And if you are not the person who won this, go out there and buy yourself a copy. You can get it online or you can get a hard copy. Darkdossier.com. It'll be down there. Awesome magazine. Perfect for the month of October. If or any like, month, really. If you like the stuff we talk about, you'll like the stuff in this magazine. Exactly. There we go. Our assistant is gone. Yeah. So I, we're going to talk about some movies. Some movies that you can see some with movies. your eyes, here with your ears. Uh, the talking pictures. Talking pictures. Uh, we saw at the old Nickelodeon down at the boardwalk. Talkies. <laughs> but these are movies that are easily accessible. Uh, we watch this. movies and judge them so that you don't have to pay to watch bad ones. And you can watch us and judge us. Yes. For the stupid things we say and do. Because we like a lot of stupid movies too. Mm -hmm. So, what's number one? What are we going to do? What are you going to hit up? Do you want to talk about one that we both watched or one that I watched and you didn't know? Let's do one? what we both watched. Let's talk about Hush. Hush. That was part, this is, <laughs> this disabled horror. Yes. This year. There were two movies of people with disabilities in horror movies. So Hush is one of these movies that was, I just kept hearing, <laughs> hearing a big buzz about. Did Marley And it wasn't Tonitis. <laughs> Um, it's on Netflix, yep. so you don't actually have to uh, pay extra um, to see it. And it's about a deaf woman. Mm -hmm. It's a home invasion movie with a deaf woman. Yeah. There we go. Uh, There's it. a log line for it right there. And uh, a lot of buzz. Finally got around to watching it. Because I kept waiting for a night where I totally wanted to pay attention. Sometimes I get home from work and I'm like, eh, I'm not going to. I'm going to check my phone the whole time if I watch a movie. Right. So watch this. And I really liked it. thought it was a lot of fun. It was really good. I, I like the uh, I like giving her that handicap so she can't hear the guy coming so she's got her and she doesn't have super senses no either. she's deaf there's a there's a there's a splash of daredevil here and there in right. this but she's not daredevil right? no. she's like not at all he's coming downwind yeah no I thought it was really fun. the guy is such a dirt bag one right great there. thing about this is the guy has a really scary mask on but oh, without okay. giving too much away. He's scarier without the mask. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Exactly. Uh, it's, one, it starts out pretty brutal. It's it's good. brutal stuff, and then it also um, one thing about her being deaf is she doesn't realize how much noise she's making. Right. So she can't she does she can't sneak around, and she can't hear him sneaking around, and she's in this cabin, her cabin in the woods, which has like all windows. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst place to ever be, even if you can hear. She's essentially in a fishbowl. Yeah. So it's a really, they did it well. It's it's tense. I was tense the entire time. Yeah, definitely. This is a no-brainer. It's on Netflix. It should be the next movie you watch. Because you get like five minutes of setup, but then bang, something yeah, happens. It gets going like, right Okay, away. here we go. Like a, it's not a, look, don't expect the big body count, but. But there's enough once, of a body count. When stuff happens, you're like, oh my God. So that's good. Hush is really good. Now, what's the related movie? The other in, uh, disabled horror, I can say this because my wife is disabled, is uh, Don't Breathe. Which I've not seen. But which I is think. not about a guy with emphysema. It's uh, about a guy who cannot see. It's the second movie, two years in a row, set in Detroit. The first being It Follows. And It Follows kind of gave you glimpses of just the nastiness of Detroit to some areas. This really, this makes it a real character in the movie. He lives, Stephen Lang lives in the worst the possible bad guy from ever. Avatar. Yeah. He is in a place, he's a blind uh, veteran whose daughter died and he lives in this house. His daughter was killed and he supposedly has hundreds of thousands of dollars in the house from a settlement from the accident. There's no, his whole street is abandoned. It's him and his dog. So these three kids, kids are probably like 19, whatever, decide they're going to break in and take the money because you don't feel entirely bad because two of the three are actually kind of good kids, but they're just in a crappy place and they got to find a way to get out and they don't have the skills or know how to do it. So they're doing it for a good reason. It's so weird. Nebulous kind of, who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. It's really cool because, you know, they're, they're trapped in his house, in his world. And again, he doesn't have superpowers. In fact, there's some kind of errors like they shoot, they fire off a gun, and that doesn't wake him up. <laughs> like, okay. Um, and then at the end, it gets crazy. I'm not going to spoil it for you or for you, but the ending, you're just like, what? 
It's really cool, though. It's. I want to see it. It might be my favorite horror movie of the year. Wow. It might be. Okay. So. Listen, I'm going to say right off the bat, so far this year has had some good movies, but hasn't been the strongest year. So anything that you say is in the running, i got to run out and see yeah, it. Yeah, to me, that's in the running, along with 10 Cloverfield Lane and The Witch. Those three are kind of jockeying for position right now. I really also like The Boy. I know. A bit lower on the list. Yeah, I like the I like the I like the twist in the end. That's what I liked about the board. Plus, uh, what's her face? She was Maggie. 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 Well, here's a movie you haven't seen that I saw that will probably end up in my top list. I don't think it'll be my top, but it is a movie that is unforgettable. It's Neon Demon. Well, yeah, I'd never heard Elle of it. Fanning, who is is she younger than up. Dakota? <coughs> I don't know. But How many Fannings? Should the Fannings all marry? She's the one in the Macaulay weird things? vampire movie Twixt. They oh, yeah. Francis Ford Coppola. Right, which well, I didn't watch because you told me not to bother. Yeah. Well, she's grown up, and she's uh, a, a girl who moves out to L.A. to become a model. She's a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. There are, like, three or four other stunning chicks in this, including... Um, Oh, uh, what's her name? She was in Sucker Punch. Uh, oh, Emily Browning? Nope. Um, damn it, she's adorable too. She was in Batman v Superman, but she was cut out of it. Uh, I'll look her up while we're talking. Yeah, really. Um, not the Asian girl from the real world. No, no, she was like the main girl from. So not the main, not the dancing girl, but the one. Well, the main girl is Emily Browning. No, it's the the, the one who, like, is escaping at the end. Oh. Oh, God. Hold on. She's she's also in the Hunger Games. And yeah, I know. He, like, I, I'm in I love have her. Sucker Punch. My daughter loves it. Oh, perfect. Uh, uh, Sucker Punch. Emily Browning. Abby Cornish. Nope. Jenna Malone. Jenna Malone. That's it. Jenna Malone is awesome in this movie. Jamie Chung is the other one I was thinking of. And Vanessa Hudgens. In the hell. Is she? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we he, haven't even opened this. That's a terrible movie. You don't need this. No, it's. A, I like that movie. Listen, I, if I'm the chick from Hush, I love this movie because this movie with the sound off is awesome. I love the soundtrack. The soundtrack's actually pretty good. I, I own the, the soundtrack. I hate the story. Anyway, um, Jenna it's Malone. It's just a visual. Yeah. Uh, Jenna Malone. All right, I know what you're talking about. Anyway, I don't want to tell you much more than what I told you because here's the thing: not this movie's not for everybody. It's kind of got like that's a little bit slow pacing. It's got like this eighty synth. You ever see Drive? Yeah. It's got, I think it's the same guy who did Drive. It's got that kind of feel to it. It's, get that cat away from those cookies. There's a cat about to eat cookies. Get away from the cookies. Uh -huh. Get away from the cookies. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this movie goes, and it's interesting. Keanu Reeves is in it, and he plays this, like, sleazy what? guy. Really? Yeah. So, it's like, is that that guy from Knock Knock? Yes. <laughs> Which is actually not bad. Um, what year was that? That was last year. That was last year. Um, anyway, the movie's good, and then I'm going to call it like the last 45 minutes of the movie. Right. It, hits the, it gets weird. It gets it changes, and you will never forget this movie Like once you see it. So yep. you're going to watch it and be like, okay, what's going on? What's going on? And then you're going to see it. And again, you may not be like, that was my favorite, but you're going to be like, I'm glad I saw that. Right. All right. Some people are going to be like, that's my favorite movie of the year. And other people are going to be like, I never want to watch it again, but I'm glad I did. Those are the kind of movies I like. Yeah. So you have to see it. And I, But I don't want, don't watch a preview. Don't read a review. It's on Amazon, right? Amazon yes. streaming? Yeah. All right. That's going to go on my watch list. Good job there. How about uh, the anthology? The Antho film. Oh, Holidays. That came out of nowhere. I just saw it on there. I was like, oh. It was on, it's on Netflix. I was like, oh, okay, maybe it's good. It's seven short horror movies, all set on different holidays, all different directors, with Kevin Smith as the big as the director in there, who actually makes probably the worst one of them all. I would have to agree. He does Halloween. Which the only thing, only way you know that it's Halloween is because they're in the store and there's a Halloween mask in the store. That's the only relation to Halloween. It is definitely the worst of the. Yep. So they're all different in tone. Oh my god. Some are lighter than others. Some are 
way sillier than others. There seem to be a lot of um, like motherhood stuff. There well, were a few that parental. Par like, yeah, the Mother's Day and the Father's Day. The Father's Day one's really interesting. Yeah, that was the one so we're recording. Strange. Yeah, that's so. Anyway, it was haunting. Before we go through each one, I'm just gonna say off the bat, I like this movie. I, I did too. Holidays is worth the watch. So many anthologies, I'm like, eh. Right. Like Southbound, that was a anthology. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to watch that. ABCs of Death and VHS, which the VHS was good. They're spotty, but this I thought was even like Tales of Halloween had some good stuff and some. Eh. Right. I like this better overall. I thought I I really thought they were St. Patrick's well Day is weird. Weird. My favorite was Easter. I thought of you the whole time in Easter because it's so <laughs> demented. Oh my god! And weird. I now, I, even as a kid, I hated Easter. Like to me, Easter was a girl holiday. It was church, and then it was chicks, baby chicks, and like nothing I liked. So I've never liked Easter. If this thing was the centerpiece of Easter, I'm all for it. Don't even say what it is. Just watch what comes out of the Just. palms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you start off with this it's like weird... It's body horror kind of stuff. It starts off with a weird St. Patrick's Day one, and then it goes to a really bizarre Easter one. So the first two, you're like, I don't know about this movie. <laughs> then it gets into like Mother's Day and Father's Day, and those were both pretty interesting ones. Yeah. The Father's Day one's very interesting. Father's Day is so... It, sta it, la it sticks with you. Yeah, like you're, you're, you want to know what the heck's going to happen. Yeah, it's really weird. And the Mother's Day one is pretty well quick. Done. The Mother's Day one I thought could have been longer. I thought that that could have been cooler if it was longer. I actually thought it was good with the length it was. I thought if it went on a little bit longer, it would have. Been. Oh, but don't forget Valentine's Day. Oh, that, that was start. That's the one that starts it. Which was it was cool. It was a good start. It's not a good short one. Right. What else is there? Uh... Well, the, the, what's there was the Halloween There's, that um... poopied. Oh, there's um, Christmas. Christmas is great. Yeah, with some um, Seth Green. Seth Green, that was a cool one. Christmas is great. That was kind of funny. Yeah, it lightened the tone it, a little bit. That felt like Tales from the Dark Side. Yes, that definitely had a Tales from the Dark Side vibe. And then New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, maybe my favorite one of the whole thing. Was it? I don't know. It. it what is it? Eli Roth's room. wife is in it. Yeah, the girl from um, Knock Knock. Knock knock and uh, the green inferno. Green inferno, yeah. And uh, as a loser. Again, that's kind another of. kind of like Tales from the Dark Side. That had a good twist. Like if they made a Tales from the Dark Side movie that was an anthology, right? Those two, the Halloween one. It felt like a, it felt like a Kevin Smith. It was out of place in this. It was set in a house in like Tampa, where they shoot porno with these girls who are like low class porn actresses and. Like webcam girls. Yeah, and then they turn on the guy. It was just so dumb. 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 But overall... I'm surprised they didn't do Thanksgiving. I know. They skipped Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I thought the Thanksgiving from uh, Grindhouse. Thanksgiving? No, it's Thanksgiving. Just, no, it's called Thanksgiving. No. I bet you're hundred bucks. Uh, fine, whatever, you win. <laughs> but it's good. I thought it was a pretty solid... Maybe anthem. they didn't because the one from Grindhouse was so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, or uh, what's the what's the one? Poultry Geist. <laughs> There's like two or three of them, I think. But Holidays, actually, that's a pretty good anthem. And it's yeah. Netflix, so you can't go wrong. Nope. And they're, they're all well done. That's the thing. It was the quality. The quality of each. There's so much crap. I was going to try and sneak in a horror movie this morning before I came over. Right. And I went through, and there was nothing jumping out of me going, Oh, yeah, that's the one. That one. Yeah. And it's funny because I'll go through like Rue Morgue magazine and their picks, and I can't find these movies. It's like the movie I want, I'm like, I can't find it on Amazon. I can't find it on Netflix. I can't find it anywhere. Do I have to move up to Canada? Amazon needs a better recommending system for horror movies. Yeah. Although they put me down the rabbit hole of bad alien movies last weekend. I was just watching one after the other. It was ridiculous. Some that I couldn't even get through. That's how bad... An alien movie has to be really terrible for me to just bail. Yeah. And Alien Exorcist or Alien Exorcism, I had to, I was like, I'm out. 
Alien Exorcist. Oh, it was so bad. Remember the dicks, the Disco Exorcist? That was great. Com uh, compared to Alien Exorcism, Disco Exorcism was fantastic. All right, one more. Green Room. Green Room, Patrick Stewart. We disagree on this one. And Anton Yelchin. Yes. And, and uh, Im Imogen Poots. Right. From the Fright Night Remakes. Remakes. Did you can say Imogen Coca. <laughs> <laughs> Put her on the roof of the car. We we differ in this because I really I saw coming attractions for that in the Alamo Theater, and I was really wanting to see it bad. And then we finally sat down, and I was like, I don't even know. I don't understand the logic of this movie. I couldn't understand physics. I could not understand what half the people were saying. They were like mush mouth hillbillies. So far, this is in my top five of the year. Uh, see, it's all thought, subjective. There was a couple of points where I was like, hmm. Seems like maybe this should happen. Right. But I thought like the stuff that does happen was pretty cool. And I thought it got better as it went along. Like I wasn't engaged in this movie till like the second half. Right. I, Patrick Stewart's really good in it. It's a punk rock band who goes to play at this skinhead club in the middle of nowhere. And then they witness a girl murdered and then they're trapped in. And Patrick Stewart is like the head of the skinheads and he owns the place. And they're just... With this weird set of logic and rules that Patrick Stewart has in place to get them out, I don't, I don't, I just didn't get it. He doesn't want them just flat out murdered in the place so that there's, because they've got other stuff going on there, they can't have the attention of the cops there. But they're murdering him in it anyway, and having him eaten by dogs and stabbed and stuff. But they were going to take all the evidence off campus. Oh my god, I didn't get it. I loved what happened to Al Anton Yelton's arm. Yes, that's some of the things that I liked about like, it. Like, I thought he was going to be dead right off the bat. I'm like, oh my God! Like, the stakes are real in this movie. Like, it's not just like you feel, oh, they're the good guy, they're going to get away and not get hurt. Right. People get hurt, people get killed. That's um, what happens when you deal with skinheads. Listen, I think it's worth watching either way. Because it's some of the best performances of the year. Patrick Stewart, he is not Captain Picard in this. No, he's not. Look, I'm not, I would tell you to, i tell anybody to watch it. I didn't like it, but it was also well done. You should done. watch it. It was well done. It was well acted, so I'll give it that. I just did not understand the logic of it. It's cool. That's fine. We are here all to agree to disagree. Yeah. That's what life is all about. So it will make your top 10 list. It won't make my top 13 list. I didn't even write it down in my... It's definitely in my top 13 list. Whereas... Yeah. A lot of other stuff, I'm like, God, I need... I need to see more movies. I'm having trouble with it. I would put The Forest over that. I didn't see that because it looked so dumb. Is that any good? No. And I would put The, <laughs> I'd put the Forest because it's got the girl, the girl from Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. So I would put that over it. All right. I think that's enough. Go watch movies. It's October. It's time. It's horror October. Hashtag horror October. Watch movies. Follow what we're watching on Twitter. Watch a combination of new movies and old movies. Mm, there you go. Go to watch some Roger Corman movies. Watch A Bucket of Blood with Carnosaur. Dick Miller. Carnosaur. Great movie there. The Fantastic Four original. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. With Wait. Dr. Doom. <laughs> <laughs> that was better than what they did later with Jessica Alba. Yes. <laughs> so bad it's good, Jason Brand. <laughs> Alright, guys. That actually would be a great one for that show. That would be. Oh my god. That or the Captain America movie. <laughs> oh, Bigfoot! Oh. All right. All right. See you next time, Mom. Monster Man. Monster Man.